Here is an extremely important question from test point of view. So many times I've seen this question in the test paper. Maximize capacity of isosceles trough. When we say isosceles trough, then we mean that the two sides are equal, these two sides, right? Here's a sketch. As I read the question, you can also relate it with the sketch given here. A trough 9 meter long is to have a cross section consisting of an isosceles trapezoid in which the base and the two sides are all 4 meter long. So these are all 4 meter long and that is the length 9 meters. At what angle should the sides of the trapezoid meet the horizontal to horizontal top to maximize the capacity of the trough? So we need to find the angle theta where these sides meet the horizontal top. And let that angle be theta. So we want to find what should this angle be to maximize the capacity of the trough. So that is the question. Now in this question, as you realize, to maximize the capacity really means to maximize the cross-section area since length is fixed, right? So cross-section area is to be maximized. Now it's a trapezoid. What is the area of a trapezoid? So the area of trapezoid is half of these two, let's say these are A and B, the sides top and bottom. So we say half of A plus B, these are two parallel sides, times height. So that is what area of trapezoid is, where A and B are the two sides. Let's say A is the top, right? So from here to here. And B is the bottom part, which is 4 for us. Now let's find this expression. And once we get the expression for area, then we can write down equation of area with respect to one variable. And that variable should be theta, the angle which these edges makes with the top. So whenever you have a word problem, you have to have an equation in single variable. And preferably, that variable should be the variable of our prime interest, right? Now, as you can see from the diagram, this is 4 base, that is not a problem at all. We know this from here to here, it is 4, but then how much is this edge? So what we constructed is two perpendicular lines, saying that we have a rectangle in between with triangles on the side, and of course these two triangles are congruent. And let the side of these triangles be x each, and height be h. Now in terms of theta, we can write x and h both. So what is x equals to? x, if that is the angle theta, then x is the adjacent side, right? Adjacent with a right angle triangle with four hypotenuse, and therefore x is equals to four times cos of theta. How about h? h is equals to four times sine of theta, since this is opposite side, right? So we get four sine theta. That's good. So now in this equation, if you see, we know all A, B, and H. B is combination of two X's and A. And H is written here, right? So we get our formula, area equals to half of A is 4 plus 2X. So A is 4 plus 2X. Instead of X, we will write 4 cos theta, right? We'll write, write it later. But let me write it here. 4 plus 2x is a. And b is 4 for us. We'll write 4 for b. And h is 4 sine theta. At present, I'll just write h. I'm running out of space here. And we'll start doing our question right from here. So as you can see, we have related the area of cross-section in terms of theta. So I can write now my function a theta equals to half of, now A, which is 4, plus B, which is 4 plus 2x, 4 plus 2 times x, and x is 4 cos theta. So I wrote cos first, so I'm right, cos theta times 4, okay, and then times height. Height is 
I put that bracket here and height is 4 sine theta so write 4 sine theta so that is an expression for area so let's simplify it a bit and then write down so we have half of 4 plus 4 8 plus 8 cos theta well this is multiplied times height right times 4 sine theta that is the height we can simplify this take out 8 so that we have a simplified expression to work with on the right side so 4 divided by 2 is 2 and then we take 8 common so 2 times 8 will be 16 so we get 16 we took 8 outside 1 plus cos theta times sine theta so that becomes our expression of area in terms of theta right so we can write area as 16 times 1 plus cos theta times sine theta is that okay now from here we'll find what is the derivative to maximize we need to find the derivative equated to 0 to get the critical points so so we can use the product rule right so we get the product rule 16 derivative of cos theta is sine theta so we can write uh, derivative of cos theta sine theta is cos theta let me do that part first so we get 16 cos theta or let me keep 16 outside that would be easier for us so we'll just worry about these two factors correct so we are just worrying about these two product rule we are applying product rule to this 16 is outside and that is the derivative of sine theta right times 1 plus cos theta now derivative of this function times sine theta derivative of this function is minus sine theta so we have minus sine theta times sine theta I'm skipping some steps here but I hope you're getting them otherwise you know how to get the area as a function of theta then you do it on your own from here that'd be better right so now we get 16 and let's open this bracket up so we get cos theta times cos theta is cos square theta this is minus sine square theta so minus sine square theta I'll write this as 1 minus cos square theta okay so that is so that I get one equation and everything is in terms of cosine right so that is the beauty of this equation so now this is a quadratic equation in cost so we can solve it so we get 16 so let's open this bracket in that case it is going to be uh, so this minus 1 we'll write at the end we'll let's write cos square theta plus cos square theta gives us 2 cos square theta so I'm rearranging I'm writing 2 cos square theta we have plus cos theta here and minus 1 that becomes a quadratic equation in cos theta which can be factored right so we need 2 1 right so we can factor this when you factor what do you get you get 2 cos theta minus 1 times cos theta plus 1 that's what you get now in this equation we need to find the critical point so the critical point is or the number say critical number is when a dash theta equals to 0 so we'll equate this to 0 and figure out the answer when is this 0 this could be 0 at two points when cos theta is minus 1 or cos theta is half so we get two possibilities so one is that cos theta equals to half so let's do it on the side itself so one is here which is equating this to 0 gives us cos theta equals to half and this gives us cos theta equals to minus 1 now when is cos theta half so for that let's look into our special triangle okay the special triangle if you remember 30 60 90 right so in that we have 1 2 square root 3 
and that should give me half and this angle is pi by 3 do you see that so for pi by 3 cos theta is half right and when is negative 1 so let me use this space now when is cos theta negative 1 for negative 1 what I do normally is I just draw a cosine wave okay and then try to figure out I know it's very easy but sometimes we forget so this is negative 1 and that is at 0 pi by 2 right this is at pi so this is at pi so this answer we get at pi by 3 so this is one solution which is at pi by 3 right and this one is at minus 1 is at pi and these are two solutions now look at it once again that is what could be the value of theta in this case as you can see theta should be between 0 to you know 90 degrees right so that is the best way theta could be between 0 to 90 degrees I should write 0 to pi by 2 since we always work in radians right remember that part so I should write 0 to pi by 2 so let me make it pi by 2 that is a restriction so this is kind of out of our range we will only consider pi by 3 for our case so for pi by 3 we should get a maximum here okay so that is the solution for us pi by 3 theta is pi by 3 now how to prove that theta pi by 3 is indeed a maximum that's also a very important point and for that you need to analyze your equation right so if you analyze your equation that is you can do that part on your own take a point which is pi by 3 for us that's the critical number pi by 3 now you have to take a point on either side of pi by 3 and check a dash theta rate of change how is it changing if it is changing from positive to negative then we have a maximum that is what you have to ensure so if you take a point here for theta as less than pi by 3 that means let us say we take a point which is pi by 4 which is less right and then plug it in and calculate right then do you get a positive thing or negative thing that is what you need to understand now if I write pi by 4 here so that is 1 over square root 2 right then you will see that you get maximum you get positive this is indeed positive how about 2 times cos theta right that is what you need to check so if you take a value which is less than pi by 3 in that case for example if you take 0 here so cos 0 is 1 so 2 times 1 will be positive right or any other value which is less than pi by 3 you will get positive answer so test it out so in this region before pi by 3 a dash theta is going to be positive and therefore it is increasing and after that it will be decreasing correct since as the angle increases cosine decreases its maximum for 0 and then as you go up it becomes 0 for pi by 2 as you can see from here right so we know it is going to be increased and therefore we do have a maximum at this point but it's kind of important to show it in your test paper right so we get maximum for theta equals to pi by 3 so that is our answer so we write down our answer that theta equals to pi by 3 gives us maximum area and therefore the maximum capacity or volume for the given trough okay so that's how you should do it have a good look at this how did we really do it so once you have a problem we want to find the angle which it makes with the top so that the capacity is maximum capacity maximum means area of cross section is maximum now to get the area we derived a formula important thing is we related angle with the side lens to get the formula and then derivative with respect to the angle gave us the maximum point so first derivative test was applied to get the answer I hope that's absolutely clear 
Thank you and all the best.